My name's Nate, and welcome to another potentially exciting episode of Outside the Vacuum. Today, we'll see if we can finally return this honky chonk back to the land of the living as a proper player piano. Let's go. All right, folks, we got our whole top section, more valves than is necessary, and our stack that we redid in the last episode. Now we can puzzle all the pieces together and do some bench testing. In other words, see how many whoopsie daisies I've planted for myself. With the bottom half of the top player unit assembled, I'll take it out to the piano and make a few adjustments. And by a few, I mean probably a lot. The player system is a completely different machine from the piano, and interfaces with these fingers to the piano action. For the player system to work efficiently and accurately, it's important that there's no gap between these fingers and the piano action. You can see there's quite a bit of gap for most of these fingers. I found a piece of veneer that's just about the right thickness, or the same size as this gap, so I'll shim the whole player unit up to help fill this gap. Almost like I know what I'm doing. Almost. With the player back in the piano, right away you can see there are a few fingers that are too high and actually lifting the piano action prematurely. But that's okay. I can lower these fingers or these cap stands to help compensate for that and remove that error. You can see there are still a few finger cap stands that are a little low, but I'll raise those up. Overall, the shimming saved me a lot of screwing around. Yay. And here's one that's too high. Next, I'll install this stop rail which allows me to adjust how far the fingers move up and down. If the fingers have too much travel, it'll negatively affect the piano action cycle. I'll adjust that in the piano. Everything has to be just so. Okay, the player action has been calibrated to the piano action. Now I'll take it back to the workshop and get the rest of this thing assembled. Wherever two major components mate on this player system, there is a gasket to prevent air leaks. Here I'm using silicone gasket, which I'm not gluing in place. It's a little more tedious to install that way, but silicone can only be attached to other materials with silicone caulking or sealant, and I don't want to contaminate this player action with such adhesives. All right, with the whole top player section assembled, it's time to connect it to a vacuum source, tape off the tracker bar, and do an initial test. While this isn't very scientific, this method allows me to quickly see whether any notes will or won't play when a hole would open in the paper roll. It's not a huge surprise that right off the bat, you can see that there are a few that are misbehaving. But what's really nice is that when the tracker bar is taped off completely, there are no notes that are playing as if they're getting a false signal. After that confidence booster, I'll install my test roll, which goes up the scale one note at a time. This is where things get serious. Here's a note that leaks when it's on in the play position. It's not the pneumatic leaking, so I'll have to tear the stack down and investigate. All right, I think I found the problem with that leaker. I'll have to talk to my quality control department about this. When this valve face was made, that was me, the center hole, or donut hole if you will, 
wasn't completely removed from the felt punching and was binding against the valve stem. This prevented the valve face from sitting perpendicular to the valve stem, preventing the valve from seating in the play position. When I was going through my test roll, I also had a note that wouldn't play at all. I verified that the primary was moving, and when I disassembled things, I found that uh, somebody didn't punch all the holes in the gasket. Oops. Okay, I've assembled it again, and I've got a strip screw. And instead of taking the thing all apart again, which I currently don't have to, thank goodness, I'll put a band-aid on that strip screw hole by putting a chunk of zip tie in the threaded portion of the hole, just here. Instead of a toothpick, these zip ties stay together much better and don't shred. I actually save zip tie trimmings just for this purpose. What? My grandparents grew up during the Great Depression. I can't just throw things away willy-nilly. Okay, the stack's back together, and I think I've got all the whoopsie daisies finally weeded out. All right, now for the second round of testing, or third or fourth, whatever. Putting the whole top player unit in the piano and basically just seeing what happens. A little more plumbing to do, connecting the air motor down to the bottom pump unit. Then I'll top off all the fluids. piano and player system have been reunited and it feels so good. The next step is to sample a few piano rolls and uh, see how this thing does. I'm trying not to get my hopes up because uh, these things rarely come up without a fight. We'll see. I think I got all the fires put out and can put this piano cabinet back together.
I'm no Tom Johnson, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. 